everyone and welcome to another tutorial. Today I want to show you how to make a double fold aperture card. I've received a lot of requests on how to do this. It's a very quick and easy way to give your cross stitches a professional looking finish. You can of course purchase these cards already made. Um, they can be a little bit hard to obtain which I have found and sometimes they're not the right window size. So you can certainly make these yourself to suit the size of your cross stitch that you have done. And the beauty of making them yourself is you can pretty much choose any color card that you want to suit your particular project. So a double fold card is simply a piece of card folded into three equal sections. The middle section is the part where you cut out the window to display your cross stitch. The left side is gets folded over and completely covers the back of your cross stitch and then obviously the right side is where you would write your normal greeting. There are other ways of making cross stitch cards and I will show those in future tutorials but today I'm going to show you how to make the double fold aperture card. And for anyone that's interested at the end of the video I'll also be showing how I make my envelopes using my envelope punch board. Uh, which is really handy because a lot of these cross stitch cards can be an unusual shape and you can't, well I can't seem to find envelopes to suit them so I make my own, They're very quick and easy and hopefully you'll enjoy that part of the process as well. Okay so the first thing you're going to need is your cross stitch design that you want to make into a card. I have this little design that you can see here that I've made for a friend and I've stitched this on 14k 14 count Ada and the design itself measures for 4 inches by 2.5 inches. You can make a card out of a cross stitch on any counter fabric um, and in any size because you're making it yourself so you can choose exactly how big or small it is going to be and that's the beauty of making these cards yourself as opposed to trying to buy an aperture card from a shop with the right shape and size window. Now I recently read that it is recommended to add some iron-on interfacing to the rear of your cross stitch design before you make your card to give it a little bit of a bit more stiffness and that is probably where I went wrong when I made my previous cards on 28 and 32 count that I found the material moved around inside the card a little bit too much for my liking, I should have actually used the iron-on interfacing but I wasn't aware of it at that point. So you may wish to do this. Um, I Personally I don't think it's really needed for Ada because it is stiff enough anyway but if you want to use that go right ahead and do that. So you would just cut a piece of iron-on interfacing larger than your design, iron it onto the back so you're actually covering the back of the stitches and then trim away any excess. So for the other supplies that you'll need, first is the card. Now for a double fold card and depending on the size of the cross stitch design that you are making into a card, you may actually need a piece of card bigger than a normal piece of card stock. A piece of card stock I find is great for making just a normal single fold card where I just stick the cross stitch onto the front and not an actual double fold aperture card. So for these types of cards, I get the much larger sheets of card from my news agency. And here in Australia, we call that poster paper. So it's a nice thickness. It's not too thick and heavy because it is going to be folded over double at the beginning of the cards. You don't want anything too thick. But also you want something that is strong enough that's going to be able to stand up. Other things you will need is some double sided tape or you could use glue but in my tutorial I prefer to use double sided tape, a Stanley knife, a pencil and eraser, some sticky glue, a bone folder, a ruler and some trimmings to decorate your card with afterwards. Personally I don't like to choose my trimming before I make the card. Uh, quite often I will complete the entire card and then take it with me 
to a craft store and then pick out what trimmings that I like. So now we have all our equipment and the first step is to determine what border you would like around the outside of your cross stitch to sit within the aperture window. So on this Ada cloth it's quite easy to count out the squares and I decided that I wanted about four squares around the entire border which gave me a height of four and five eighths of an inch and a width of three inches. So you can see by where the placement of these yellow pins is, is where the aperture window will start. Whatever border you decide on is completely up to you and what feels right for the design. Some borders you might like to have right up close to the edge of the stitching, others you might like to have quite a bit more width around the actual design. For me personally, this is what I chose for this design. So once you've decided on the size of your aperture window, then you need to figure out how much card you want around the outside of your aperture window. Again, completely up to you. I like a one inch border all around. I have made cards with the recommended half an inch on the sides and an inch on the top and bottom, but I wasn't completely happy afterwards and I just prefer the one inch all around. Again, completely up to you whether you make this smaller or wider. It all will affect the finished outcome, so you need to be happy with whatever you choose. So in this photograph, you can see where the yellow pins are located is my aperture window. And then I've placed red pins an inch away and that will be the top and the bottom of my card. And I'll do the same for the width. As you can see here, I've decided on one inch around the window on the width as well. So it's one inch, both sides, top and bottom. So that gives me my first important measurement of six and five eighths of an inch high by five inches wide. And we're going to use these measurements first to rule up our card. So starting with the height of the card, which in my case is six and five eighths of an inch, I mark that on my cardstock. And then I need to take my measurement of five inches wide, which is the width of the front of my card, and I need to multiply that by three. So we have three panels of five inches wide in this particular case. So my measurements are six and five eighths of an inch high by 15 inches. The panel on the far left side is the side that actually gets folded over to cover up the rear of your cross stitch. So to allow for this, we cut about two millimeters off of the end of this side only. And that's why you can see the double lines there. So I need to cut off that little bit of extra just to allow for the folding and it gives a nice neat finish inside the card. So the left side panel is all organized. Now we're going to work on the middle panel which is where your aperture window is going to go. Now you'll notice at this stage that my card is still intact with the whole sheet of cardstock that I'm using. And that is because should I make a mistake at this point, I am still able to erase any of the lines and start again if need be, rather than cutting it all up and then realizing I made a bit of a boo-boo and have to start all over again. So, in your middle panel, this is where you just simply measure out whatever border it was that you decided on for your window. So in my case, it was a one inch border. So you simply, using a ruler and being very careful, measure out one inch all the way along and overlap your lines so that it becomes easier when it's time to cut it. So using your Stanley knife and a nice straight ruler, line it up against those lines and cut it from intersection point to intersection point. Also need to note at this point, make sure you have something underneath your card and you're not directly cutting on a table or any other surface that you might damage. Take particular care in not going over the lines at the corners because this will be noticeable from the front of your work. So take your time, 
be very, very careful. And also make sure that your Stanley knife is sharp because if it is blunt, you will not get a nice neat cut. And this is how it should look when you're done. So next I like to lay the aperture window over my cross stitch just to make sure that everything I planned worked and that I'm happy with how the entire thing looks. Now before attaching any of my cross stitch I like to cut the entire card so still allowing myself a chance to make any mistakes before I actually insert the cross stitch because once that's glued into place then nothing can be changed. So here is the card cut to its final size and you'll note on the far left the two millimeter strip that I mentioned cutting off on the left hand side so that we have a nice neat fold that goes over the back of the cross stitch. And then I like to actually use an eraser to get rid of all those pencil lines because I don't want to have my cross stitch actually touching the pencil lines. Now if you look in this picture you can see around the aperture window are the lines where my card is going to be folded and you'll notice that my Ada fabric is a lot wider than these lines. Now obviously these need to be trimmed right back because we can't have any of that fabric showing on the inside of the card. So I generally like to cut my fabric halfway between where the aperture window is and where the edge of the card is. So again my pins are still in place here and you can see the yellow pin marks where my aperture window starts and the red pin marks where the top of the card is. So I've placed a cut right in the middle of both of those which will allow enough room for gluing the fabric down with um, double sided tape and enough for it to not overhang the edge of the card which we don't want. And I do this for all four sides of my fabric. So take your time with this step. This is one step you don't want to mess up because if you cut your cross stitch fabric too short then you'll have nothing to glue to to the inside of your card and I don't want that happening to anybody so make sure you take your time measure it three times cut once that's always my motto so now it's time to fold and you'll notice that I still have not glued my piece in yet again making room for any errors I want to make sure that every process of the card is complete and I'm happy with it before I make the final stage of attaching my cross stitch within it. So I've, I use a bone folder here. If you have one, they give um, a nice sharp fold. If not, just fold it as best as you can um, along those fold lines. And obviously folding from the wrong side, which is where you have lined up the measurements folding over onto the inside. So here's the card all ready for my cross stitch to be mounted on the inside. Um, at this stage I'm very happy with how it's all been cut and folded and I'm ready to progress to the next stage. So now I simply place some double sided tape around the aperture window making sure to not go right up to the edge of the window because you don't want it visible on the good side. Obviously we do this on the wrong side of the card and you can either use the standard width um, tape like I have here or you can use a thinner one depending on the material that you are mounting inside that window. Just laying my cross stitch over the top of this here you can see that there isn't quite enough fabric to cover the tape but that doesn't matter because we're going to be folding the left side of the card over and all that will be completely gone. So then remove the tape and I like to turn the card over at this stage and press it down from the front so that I can line it up a little bit more carefully. Doing it from the reverse side um, won't guarantee you a nice straight result and even though you've done everything right sometimes it is, it is very easy to have the design a little bit skew if. So again take your time with this part of the process and if it is off when you place it in the card there are ways around fixing that. 
by adding some trim to various areas of the card. So here's the cross stitch all secured in place and it's time to now organize the left side of the card and again you can see I have placed double sided tape around the left side of the card you don't have to put as much on as I have here but I like a nice secure finish so just all around the edge making sure to be on the inside of that fold line and then remove the tape and stick it down into place And that part's done. Now the fun part begins of trimming it. Um, should you wish to, obviously you don't have to, you can leave it just as it is. Some designs are very intricate as they are and don't require any trim. But um, I like to add some trim whenever I can. And in this particular case, I've just added a simple ribbon, which I've tied into a bow. Your only limit here is your imagination. There are so many products available to trim cards with, with scrapbooking and all that stuff available to you. It's, you know, there's no reason why you, you can't do something different every time should you wish. And the same goes with the aperture window itself. In this particular tutorial, I've shown you a rectangular window. It doesn't have to be like that. You could do a circular shape. You could do an oval. You could do a square which is mounted at the top of the card with space below, should you wish to have some additional trim or a message on the front of the card, it's really totally up to you. I found these cute little made with love stickers in the scrapbooking section of my store and I try and use these on the rear of my cards because I think they add that nice personalised touch. Now for anyone interested, I'm just going to show you how I make my envelopes. Now I, am, I use normal paper card stock, so not actual card but the paper and I also use an envelope punch board and mine is from We Are Memory Keepers which I purchased for a really good price um, from an eBay shop. The punch board comes with a scoring knife that you can see there in the picture and all the measurements, well quite a few measurements um, for various size cards and you, you can even go online there is a site available I'll try and link it down below if I can remember it and you can actually put in additional measurements that aren't included on this board to figure out what size envelope you need to make which is a very handy thing so the first step is to measure the card to decide what size paper that you need to cut and I have I like to allow extra if I have a trim on my card because it's obviously not going to fit into a nice snug little envelope with this ribbon so I've allowed a little bit extra. I always feel it's bigger to have an envelope too big than one too small. So my measurements are going to be five and a half inches by seven inches. So I go to my envelope punch board and I look for that measurement on the board. For those of you that like to work in centimeters and not inches the punch board also comes with a sticker that can be placed over the board to cover up the inch measurements where you can use centimetres instead. But with cross stitches, everything is talked about in inches, so I still just prefer to work in inches. So as you can see, I've put the knife just over the line where I'm looking at. You see on the left it says 5.5 by 7 and my paper size needs to be 10 and 1 eighths of an inch by 10 and 1 eighths of an inch. So I get my piece of paper and I put it in my paper trimmer and cut it by those measurements. So generally these are a 12 inch piece of square paper so I have plenty there. Should I be making a bigger um, card I would actually need to purchase some a special size paper from a news agency. So next going back to the punch board look for our measurements again and on the far right you will see score line four and a half and that's all we need to know. So that is the measurement that we use to line up our paper that we've just cut onto the punch board. So I like to turn my piece of paper upside down so that I can see my score lines and I don't get confused by a pattern 
So lining the top of the paper up along with the top of the punch board and lining it up with that measurement on the left hand side that you can see that says four and a half. So we line it up at that point and press the big green button in the middle and what that does is actually cuts a little groove or um, a half moon shape into the paper and then you score along a line that is embedded into the punch board on the right hand side. Uh, it was a bit difficult to show that in these photographs but if you look carefully you may be able to see it near the green knife. This score line is really important because you need this to line up for the next three measurements. So instead of measuring four and a half again we only have to measure it once and then we use that score line and we line that up with that big green dome or rather I suppose it is called a punch. So where you can see the punch there it has a little a bit that overhangs out the front that is where you line that up until you score line again you push the button down make the cut in the paper and then you score again on the right side there are loads of tutorials on this on youtube so if you want to see it in action I suggest you go and have a look but it's just so simple just line it up punch it score it Turn the paper around, line it up, punch it, score it. And you do that until all four sides are done. And then you will see here that we have a square piece of paper with a rectangular score line in the middle, four indentations on each side of the paper and four straight corners. Now the next step is to get rid of those four straight corners. We want them nicely rounded. So along the top of the punch tool, is a section where you place the material in, punch it down and it nicely rounds those corners off. And then using a bone folder or you can even use the um, end of the green knife that comes with the punch board, just fold along those lines and using the, the bone folder make, make it a nice flat fold, bring the two sides in and then fold up the bottom and then you need some roll-on glue tape or this is sorry roll-on double-sided tape and as you can see here where the shiny part is just run two strips on the bottom section of those side pieces and then fold up the bottom and stick it into place and we're all done so I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial guys thank you again for watching and I'll be back with another card tutorial with a slightly different focus for you soon. Thank you. Bye.